Hello there YouTube, this is DIY Electronics and today I'm going to talk to you about a um, boost converter. Um, I'm going to explain to you exactly what's going on in the circuit and, um, and then we're actually going to put one together and uh, see it in action. Um, a boost converter uses um, the properties of a uh, inductor to amplify a voltage. Um, as you guys probably know, um, an inductor stores current um, and it, it really doesn't like to change the amount of current it has simply because the more current you add or remove the more flux or the flux increases and that's hard to do so it's just like a capacitor resist voltage um, a inductor resist the change in current so it changes its resistance which is its reactance to kind of help the circuit keep going and it causes spikes and voltages um, and if you catch those spikes you can store them and get a higher voltage than what you're actually um, you originally started with so what I got going on right here and that would be more with a choke but what we're going to actually use is with a uh, transformer um, all these parts should be readily available and easy to get um, on this little schematic here um, it, it's actually a relay if you can't notice that but um, I couldn't they didn't have a, um, a transformer so I went with the relay it's close enough it's an inductive load and it kind of looks like a transformer, sort of. Um, so what we got going on here is over here on the left hand side, um, separated by the white wire, we have our oscillator circuit. What that circuit does is that it creates a frequency. We're using a 555 timer with uh, two resistors and a capacitor to create the frequency. Um, all these parts I will list in the video description so don't worry about exactly what they are um, so that part of the circuits the oscillator it creates a frequency if you have a, an Adreno or um, you know like a pick or a pickaxe or whatever um, kind of microcontroller you like to use and it has a pulse width modulation function on it you can actually just use your Adreno or PIC to create the frequency for this project instead of using the 555 timer. Um, once you got the frequency generated and the frequency that I have set up with the components that I got is about 2700 hertz. So about 2700 times a second is what I'm pulsing. Your standard household AC is at about 60 hertz. 60 times a second. Um, so what happens after we got a frequency is it, it comes out pin 3 here on the 555 timer and shoots over to this transistor. Now on here it's just a standard bipolar transistor but what I'm actually using is a MOSFET. Um, like I said the parts will be in the description. Um, so that's going to go to the gate of the MOSFET and it's going to kick the, the transistor on and off every time the frequency pulses and what that's going to do is it's going to it's going to act as a switch and every time that that gate pin goes high or it pulses up um, it's going to connect that switch and that switch is going to send power through the transistor or I should say starting over here from the resistor it's going to send power up that resistor through the, the the secondary coil through this little black wire over to the gate or drain and then it's going to go through the drain of the MOSFET and out and out of the source to ground and this little LED that we got going on here that's just so I know that um, it's on 
um, and that's just connected between the drain. I got a resistor there between the drain and uh, an LED between the resistor and the hot leg of the breadboard. So what's going to happen is that's going to pulse and it's going to send a frequency through the inductor and and once it sends that frequency through the other primary coil which has a lot more windings on it is going to pick up that frequency and it's going to resonate it and it's going to then we're going to take that frequency and we're going to use a diode and a capacitor to turn the AC voltage that we're going to get out back into DC. Now you could use a bridge rectifier but for simplicity I'm using just a single diode um, and what happens with this is you miss half of the waveform on the AC so if you were to look at the, the power the DC power coming off this side of the circuit it would be half the wave would be cut off whereas a full wave bridge rectifier you actually get both waves and you don't get any hit and misses but um, simplicity trying to stay simple alright and then connected between the two legs of the capacitor is a drain resistor which is moved over here because it won't let me make it any smaller or turn it sideways so I got it right there and then our outputs are these two legs right here and that's your hot output that's your negative output now this is high voltage depending on the transformer that you use you could be talking a thousand volts um, also depending on what components you pick um, and capacitors that you use over here as storage you could be dealing with a lot of amperage and a lot of current so this is dangerous and you do need to be careful well now that we're over here you can see this is the actual schematic that I originally drew up um, it's got everything laid out just like the other schematic does and this is the exact same thing that I just showed you and um, so let's hop over to the actual circuit and this is how I have it laid out um, this right here is my MOSFET I have it connected to a aluminum heat sink so that it can dissipate the heat um, I would recommend using a, an NPN power MOSFET preferably um, you could do this well depends on your transformer size but um, anyways so the circuit here is set up just like we have it over there this right here is our oscillator circuit this is our transistor here there's our LED and right there's the resistor for the LED and there's another look at the way I got it laid out um, and here's our transformer and it's uh, simply a uh, transformer out of the wall mounts that you normally see um, I had an old one laying around so I popped the transformer out of it it's a 20 to 9 volt transformer I don't know the exact windings um, it's about 13 milli, milli henry's on the, the secondary side I have a 10 ohm 5 watt power resistor connected to the transformer and then the other end of the transformer is connected to the MOSFET and it runs through the MOSFET to ground you have to use a power resistor um, and a heavy duty wattage one too um, you can try different ohms on these um, lower or higher um, but just uh, be cautious with that because you will just if you're using quarter watt resistors they will burn up in an instant over here we have our uh, capacitors and diodes this capacitor right here is a 150, 150 volt 3UF cap 
The reason I picked a 3 UF cap is because um, I don't want it to store much charge. Um, you know, you could use some power supply caps and store, you know, a, a shitload of uh, coulombs or amperage or power there, but I'm not looking to store it because I don't want to get myself shocked. Um, the most important part of this whole circuit is this resistor right here. This right here is it's going to drain the capacitor um, and it's a one mega ohm uh, like I said it'll be in the parts um, it's a high ohm resistor so that it don't have constant current flowing through it but it is very important because it will drain this cap so that w once you charge it up if you were to touch it when you went to remove it it wouldn't shock you which is important so Another warning about um, transformers is inductors store current, just as capacitors store voltage. So when you use big conductor, big inductors, um, when you disconnect them from a power source, they still hold current. They they don't just dissipate like a resistor or um, another component, a discrete component. They actually hold that um that amperage in there so the legs on these capacitor on these inductors are hot for a period of time after just like we looked at in the rc um video how the capacitor stored um voltage yeah even after it was disconnected like a battery all right so let's fire this up and see what we got um there we go the wire was loose. We have about 36 volts. The 35-ish. Um, and that's at 5 volts. Alright, at 12 volts we have 127 and it's rising. Now as the current goes into this um, transformer it's going to build up current which in turn is going to build up um, voltage. And then we have about 130 volts coming back out. And that's expected. Um, so that is um, a, DC, DC, a DC to DC boost converter. Um, fairly easy to build. And as components get hot over here, um, your voltage will change a little bit. Um, and the lower voltage you can input the better because these your power transistors depending on your heat sink are going to create a lot of heat um, and the frequency that I'm switching my transistor at is about 2700 Hertz um, and you can hear the you can hear the transistor buzzing um, but if you were to use an Adreno or um, uh, some other microcontroller you could regulate the frequency you know by punching into different numbers and trying this at different frequencies and at different frequencies you'll get different voltages um, because you change the the reactance of the, the secondary winding changing the resistance changing the amount of current and voltage going into it so there you have it thanks for watching